close your eyes. Watch your breath all the way in, all the way out. Each breath as it comes in, each breath as it goes out. Try to stay here as continuously as you can. There's going to be a lot of activity today, so this is a good time to get some quiet. Keep your mind in one place, wherever the breath is easiest to follow. Thinking of the breath not so much as the air coming in and out through the nose, but the movement of energy in the body. Where is that clearest as you breathe in and breathe out? Focus your attention there. And then do your best to stay. And one good way of getting the mind to be willing to stay there is to make the breath really comfortable. So ask yourself, what would feel really good right now in terms of the breath? You have that option. We're not just stuck here with whatever comes up. We can actively shape our experience, starting with the breath, and then going on to the way we talk to ourselves, and the images we hold in mind, the feelings we hold in mind. These things shape our experience, and a lot of them we can shape. We're free to make them more and more skillful, which means there'll be less and less suffering. So how do you talk to yourself? Right now you talk to yourself about the breath. As you leave the meditation, you can talk to yourself in other ways that are skillful. Remind yourself that it's when there's a lot of people working together like this, there are bound to be differences of opinion. And so there are two ways that you can help the situation. One is, as the Buddha says, you help yourself by helping others. In other words, you treat others with goodwill and with sympathy. At the same time, you realize that there are bound to be differences, so you have to have some patience and equanimity as well. If you can develop these qualities in mind, they become part of your strengths. They're your perfections. And as helping others by helping yourself, try to maintain your balance inside. So stay centered inside. If you see anything unskillful coming up in your thoughts, just let it go. Let it stop right there. Don't let it come out in your actions, come out in your words. And that way you protect your mind, and you're making life easier for the people around you. Otherwise it's like having tigers in your house. You open the doors and the tigers go roaming around in, in the neighborhood, causing all kinds of trouble, eating up the neighbor's dogs, threatening the neighbors themselves. We need to keep them inside, where you have some control over them. So that way by looking after yourself, you're looking after others. And as I said earlier, by looking after others, you're also looking after yourself. You benefit from developing goodwill. You benefit from developing equanimity and patience. This is one of the signs of the Buddha's genius. So many people say, there's a big question, well, did, should you work for your own happiness or should you work for the happiness of others? And the Buddha's answer was both. And there are ways to do both at the same time. So your happiness increases as other people's happiness increases, and then their happiness will increase as yours does. So it's not a zero-sum game. One of the reasons we gather together and pay homage to the Buddha is because he made this discovery. So we can be happy in a perfectly harmless way. So look after yourself, and you'll be looking after others. When you're looking after others, you're looking after yourself. If you do it right, both sides benefit.